Good morning and welcome to Recipe for Success. My name is Nancy Giacalone and on this show we talk about what is required to be successful not only in cooking, which is something I love, but primarily in business. And today I'm really excited because I have my dear friend and broker, Tanya Boyd, joining me as my guest co-host. And um, our, our official guest today is Cole Egger with Listeners on Call. I think I have a little bit of a Texas theme going on right now because it seems like the last few guests I've had have been from Texas. And I know both of you are from Texas as well. So I'd love for you to introduce yourselves and tell us where you're from. So Tanya? Hi, Nancy. I am Tanya Boyd and I, I work, yes, I'm a broker specializing in health insurance. That's how Nancy and I met. Um, I have, I'm a Texas native, thank goodness. Very grateful to be here. I tell people I have the best of both worlds. I have an office right outside of Dallas, but my home is about an hour east of Dallas. So I have the city life by day and the country life by night. And it's it's quite the nice balance. Awesome. Cole? Sure. I'm Cole Egger, CEO and co-founder of, of Listeners on Cole. And I'm also a Texas native. Uh, I grew up uh, in West Texas, just outside of a uh, town called Abilene, Texas. I uh, went to school down at Texas A&M, and then I've been in Dallas since 2004. So uh, Texas through and through, and now I'm, I'm fortunate to live kind of right here in the, the heart of uh, the DFW area. Nice. Okay, so until Tanya introduced me to listeners on call, I'd never heard of empathetic listening. I didn't know what it was. I couldn't quite put my head around um, what it was that you do. But the more I've learned, of course, the more sense it makes. So much so that, of course, both Tanya and I have purchased your service for our um, staff as well, because we think it's really awesome. So tell us a little bit more about um, Listeners on Call and how it helps fill a current need or void in our society. Sure. So, you know, I think when you think about Listeners on Call, first and foremost, I would say, you know, we're an on-demand peer-to-peer support platform that is judgment-free, and we offer personalized connections to listeners. And so, uh, in a nutshell, we oftentimes get coined by many groups that we work with as the the Uber of empathy. Um, maybe, maybe these days we want to go by the, the Lyft for empathy. <laughs> you know, it, it, it depends on uh, your own perspective and opinion. But um, so we are an on-demand platform. Uh, you know, our our uh, our focus is really ensuring that everyone has the opportunity to be heard and connect with someone in a time of need. Uh, certainly over the last year, we've all faced a, a tremendous number of challenges uh, with COVID, which I think is, has certainly amplified that conversation around uh, mental health and even provided more of a need for a service like listeners on call. So um, just to follow up on that, I think that over the last year, well, it's been a full year now going on, go, we're past the year mark, but how has the isolation that a lot of people have experienced how has that affected their mental health and how could listeners on call help somebody that's feeling so incredibly isolated? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we were, we were facing an epidemic of loneliness and isolation even prior to COVID. Uh, there's, while there's a tremendous number of statistics out there today, uh, loneliness and isolation has been equated to smoking even the equivalent of smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Um, it, is a, it has a significant impact on one's both mental and physical health. And so I, I think with listeners on call, understanding that there's always someone there to connect with. And in our situation, ensuring that level of compatibility, because we believe that understanding that level of compatibility and, and almost guaranteeing that level of connection is really critical for success and the overall outcome and ensuring that someone leaves in a more positive state of mind. Uh, matter of fact, in some of our most research, uh, recent research that we've been able to produce, We've been able to demonstrate that over 97% of all individuals who come to our platform leave our platform in a more positive state of mind. Awesome. That's awesome. Hey, Cole, I've got a question for you. Can you explain to our audience how is Listeners on Call different than, let's say, an EAP, an employee assistance program, or even telemedicine visits that are becoming more popular now when it concerns our mental, our mental health? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think first and foremost, I want to make sure that you know, we certainly promote and endorse um, licensed therapy. We promote, endorse, and oftentimes we see ourselves as positioned as complementary to traditional EAPs. I think oftentimes whenever you start to hear the word mental health uh, being discussed, we always tend to gravitate towards the clinical mental health, the clinical side of mental health. 
And the reality is for so many individuals out there today, they simply just need to, to talk or be heard of something that's maybe going on in their, their home life, or maybe it is around work or a friendship or something that they're dealing with personally, but doesn't necessarily require them to seek out a licensed clinical professional. And so we really look to serve as that, that first step in the spectrum of care is really a position that we want to take. And again, seen as a complementary service to many of your traditional EAP programs that are out there today. And then ultimately allowing that individual to feel more comfortable uh, in having that first conversation and taking that first step. And then ultimately being able to leverage that own, uh, that, that company or that organization's internal resources to help guide that individual to finding the right resource should they need to uh, connect with somebody else. I think that's great. <clears throat> We all need someone to listen to us. Sometimes we just need to vent. I've called friends oftentimes on the way, way to work. I'm like, can I just whine? Can I just be whiny for a minute? Can you just let me be immature? And it feels so much better. So listeners on call is phenomenal. So thank you for that. Yeah, well, I will, I will tell you, need, need to vent has been in our uh, top five uh, topics of conversation on the platform for probably. Well, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. Swipe, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I have a, um, a follow-up question to that. So, I think about the people that would be most likely to access something like this because currently, you know, it's an app and, you know, you would have to have it on your phone. But I'm also thinking about the senior population. So a lot of seniors are very isolated and alone and afraid and lonely and all those other things. How do we get the message out to the senior population about how listeners on call could work for them? Because a lot of us may have parents or um, relatives that are older and isolated in a different part of the country and we're not there for them. So how could we help them become more familiar with this product? Yeah, so there's, there's a number of ways that can happen today. I'll tell you that we've, we've already been in discussions with a number of, of different organizations that are out there today focused in the senior community, uh, two of the largest, uh, if not the largest associations out there today. I won't name names, but I'm sure we, you we can guess. Yeah. Those were my <laughs> Um, and so it starts with A and ends with P, but you know. <laughs> but today you have the opportunity, um, you know, you could go to listeners on call today and you could uh, find a listener that you feel like would be a great listener for a loved one who might be a parent or somebody living in a, um, a senior living home. And so you would have the opportunity to do that and create that connection. And so uh, we also do a lot of work with caregivers. Many of our other conversations today are talking with facilities themselves and ensuring that we're taking care of those who are taking care of, of seniors. And so ensuring that they have someone to connect with and reach out to in a time of need, as you can imagine, certainly during the midst of, of COVID, the, the stress that has been placed upon those individuals um, who are the caregivers out there today and, and certainly um, commend them for all the work that they've done, uh, but ensuring that they have the opportunity to reach out and connect to somebody when they need support and that that's available, I think is extremely important as well. So on the flip side of that, Tanya, you have um, daughters in college. Um, can you see where the need for this would be phenomenal for college age students? Absolutely. I've recommended, I've suggested it, It's but it's that taking that first step. And you know, I'm their mother, so I'm the last one they're gonna listen to, right? But totally, I mean, they're dealing with so much right now. College is different and the world is different. And they're just, they're in this different, different chapter in their life. And just the stresses and the uncertainty that they're dealing with that yet they don't really want to talk too much about it. It's pretty funny. I'm like, do they teach you this in college? Because every time the conversation goes a little bit, maybe hard when they're talking to me, it's all of a sudden, okay, I'm going to let you go. Okay. I'm going to let you go. I'm like, do they teach you guys that in college? But I, it's, yeah, definitely. These these kids in college definitely need this. I think, Cole, you actually have a college, right? You guys work with a college, but 100 percent. They're definitely um, definitely need someone to listen to. You know, and I, I would just I would add to that is that one of the uh, one of the things that we seem to have such a great impact with listeners on call is is really the opportunity to even offer perspective. So there is the value of listening and being there and ensuring that uh, you're offering support in a time of need should someone need to connect. But quite frankly, I've used it quite often myself as, as a place of perspective, right? Well, where is it today that you can simply on demand pick up a phone or reach out to connect to somebody who you know has an authentic experience and a background for what it is that you may be going through and can provide that level of perspective and do so within a matter of minutes, cost effective, and it's convenient. And I think that is so critically important, especially when you start to talk about 
uh, the college demographic and, and the age there. I mean, you know, today it is a, an average wait time of four to 10 weeks on campus to see a college counselor. And that's statistically across the board in the United States. And so um, where do these students go? Who are they engaging with? How do they interact? Uh, where are they reaching out to for support? So um, certainly agree with that as well. Absolutely. They call their friends, but this is this is better because their friends don't have to be involved, right? Exactly. So what I, I'm barging in on Tanya, but um, it's just my nature. So, um, so I think it's important to understand the difference between empathetic listening and sympathetic listening, because there's a big difference. And I think it became more clear to me this year when my father passed, as far as understanding when somebody is sympathetic, which is nice, but empathetic actually feels, it, it, it feels like they really understand what you're going through. So could, could you expand on that for just a second, Cole? Sure. You know, Nancy, we, we've talked about this before as well, is that, you know, my reasoning for creating listeners on call was because of my own personal journey and experience with my father, who unfortunately passed away this last fall, but I uh, was diagnosed with cancer five years ago. And it, it wasn't till uh, even despite uh, seeing a number of different licensed therapists over the course of, of several years, uh, it wasn't until I was able to meet an individual who uh, did not come from a, a, a clinical background, but ultimately wound up being one of the most empathetic listeners that I had ever met because of her personal life experience and that what she had gone through as a, as a stem cell donor for a family member, much like I had gone through with my father. And it was really on, on that occasion and that connection and the impact that she had on me that, you know, I really began to understand that while I did have a lot of uh, friends and, and family and others out there who were very sympathetic in my situation, having that connection, that understanding as to what I was going through uh, and that resource that I had available to me was was really what had that impact. And that while I had felt very alone in my situation early on, I ultimately came to realize that I was not alone uh, in my experience and that there's millions of individuals out there today who've gone through similar experiences. And we're, we're very fortunate and very humble to have um, today, thousands of, of listeners on our platform who are willing to share those life experiences to the benefit and, and help of others. Awesome. Okay, Tanya, I'm done hogging the stage. Yeah, that's wonderful. <laughs> you know, I'm going to go off, off script here. So, Cole, I don't know that people are really grasping how amazing this is. So let's say that just like you, dealing with you, you some uh, feeling lonely, nobody, if you go to a, a counselor, Maybe they haven't experienced their father being ill and dealing what you've dealt with. So your listeners can become that empathetic listener because you can pretty much get put with the listener that has dealt with your dealing with. Right. So isn't that the beauty of this? Yeah, that is, that is correct. All of our listeners share their their stories, um, mm -hmm. and so their own personal experiences. So, you know, unlike potentially connecting to um, a licensed therapist, which, again, I, I want to make sure that we we certainly promote and endorse licensed therapy, but oftentimes understand that that connection and understanding that maybe that individual hasn't been through what through what through the same experience that you're currently going through or that they have ultimately really determines the, the outcome of that conversation and your ability to relate to that individual. And so with our platform, you have the opportunity to understand every situation that that individual has been through with regards to that topic. They, they humbly share their experience and what they've been through so that you can ensure that you have that compatibility and that you can relate to what they're going for, going through even prior to connecting. Yeah, I think that's wonderful. I've got friends now that I'm like, I've got to call you because we think alike. Like I just have to talk to someone that isn't crazy. So, so having that person that has the same experiences and it, 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 that's, that is priceless. So thank you for that. I do have a quick question. Um, who all can use this? We've talked about employers, employees, could individuals just, just use this. And then, you know, I'm going to follow up with a question about how brokers might be able to use this. Yeah, absolutely. So today you have the ability to go online, download the app and, and use our platform today as an individual. Um, I know you're leading into the question with brokers, but we do work with a number of different employers, employer benefits groups and brokers as well as offering that as part of a, on many occasions, as a complimentary service to a traditional EAP type program. Uh, we also offer it as a standalone uh, benefit. I know right now mental, mental health benefits and where we're moving uh, the latter part of this year and certainly into 2022 are top of mind for all employers as to focusing on retention of employees, focusing on 
uh, productivity, uh, health and happiness for employees uh, coming back to work. Uh, certainly that's still a confusing time as well as, as where we're going to end up in this kind of what seems to be the norm right now is this kind of hybrid situation, if you will, of employees coming back in part time, but certainly being able to uh, mitigate a lot of those kind of unknowns and providing additional benefits is, is a conversation that we find ourselves in almost daily. Yeah. Well, I think once you get your mental health in check, if we're happier, everything seems to work out, right? So this is mental health is a huge, huge issue, issue and now more than ever. Um, and what did you want to tell us about any brokers that might be listening? Because Nancy has a big fan base with other brokers. And so we know other brokers are listening. If if brokers or insurance professionals or advisors, we've got lots of names. If we wanted to include this in what we offer to our clients, how would a broker go about doing that? Absolutely. Um, would love to connect with anyone who is interested in, in offering this to your clients. So you can connect with us on uh, through our website or, or reach out to me personally on, on LinkedIn or even through uh, you, Tanya or Nancy. And we'd love to connect with anyone who's interested in offering this because we are seeing um, a tremendous amount of traction uh, in the broker employer benefit space. So we'd love to have that conversation. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So we've talked about all the ways and the, the, the different groups of people that might access this benefit. Now I want to talk a little bit about the listeners. So where did they come from and how do you qualify them? And before you answer, I want to also encourage anybody that happens to be watching live, this is your opportunity to ask Cole questions. So type it in the comments. We'll pop it up on screen and make him super nervous. So anyway, <laughs> no, just kidding. So um, back to the listeners, Cole. So what? tell us about those. Sure. So today our, our listeners come from um, all walks of life. They have a variety of different life experiences. Uh, all of our listeners go through background checks. They all go through an onboarding education training process as part of what we call our listening academy. Uh, and through our curriculum that we've created with a number of different licensed professionals called Connected Listening. Uh, our listeners today come from backgrounds which uh, have a strong focus um, in background and empathy. Oftentimes those are social workers, teachers, nurses, caregivers, and certainly dozens of other professions. Uh, we uh, very humbly have uh, had thousands of individuals apply to be on our platform today. Um, and so we continue to onboard those individuals um, as our availability opens up. Um, but really, it's, it's anyone who has those life experiences and are willing to share. And then, of course, um, go through the vetting process and are approved by our, our licensed care team. So a follow-up question to that is um, currently in today's society, there's a lot, there's many, many issues going on, not just the loneliness, but, you know, there's a lot of racial tensions and um, stress from the elections, et cetera, et cetera. But so let's say that somebody wanted to talk to somebody about, you know, you know, racial tensions, would they be able to choose someone that, that would be a, amenable or applicable for their situation? Absolutely. Um, one of our topics on our platform is just that it's race relations. So absolutely we have the opportunity. And so, you know, through our platform, you have the ability to come in and set your preferences. So an individual's age, uh, sex, maybe male or female, uh, you have the opportunity to say, you know, I would be interested in only speaking with um, a female over the age of 35 who has experience as a mother and has also maybe dealt with uh, feeling alone or burnout or stress or a combination of and the opportunity then to surface those available listeners and connect with somebody after listening to their own audio experience to ensure that you have that level of compatibility with that individual. Awesome. I think that's wonderful. And Cole, even if it's three o'clock in the morning and I wake up and I just want to talk to someone, this is 24 seven, right? It is. We have a listeners uh, who are available on demand, uh, 24 seven, 365. Um, as you can imagine, they're not uh, awake <laughs> 24 hours a day. Uh, but because of the number of listeners that we have uh, available, there is always someone uh, on demand to connect with. And then also you can schedule a time to connect with any listener. Maybe, yeah. maybe that individual that you come across their profile, you listen to their experience and you just go, wow. I can't believe this individual has literally gone through something that I feel like I'm going through right now. Mm -hmm. I would love to connect and understand how they, they work through that situation. And um, you have the ability to schedule an appointment at a time that's convenient for you as well. Gotcha. It's wonderful. You may have touched on this, but if somebody did want to become a listener, what would be their first step? Sure. So today they would go to our, our platform and they would apply to be a listener and they can do that through our website or by downloading the app. 
Perfect. Thank you. Absolutely. So before we get into the final section with our burning questions, um, let's talk about cost. So I, I think this sounds great. I'm interested. I'm dealing with something and I really want to talk to somebody. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm downloading the app. I'm going, I'm going to get this, but how much does it cost? Sure. So um, today, if you were just to go download the app as an individual, you would pay 50 cents a minute to use our application um, through our partner programs and working with uh, benefits organizations, you know, as we've shared and as we've discussed before, uh, oftentimes the, that cost is completely subsidized by that employer as part of that overall benefit or, or perk um, to have access to the service. So, I mean, that's fantastic. If you think about it, I mean, if we do the math on that real quick, 50 cents a minute, that's $30 an hour. And I'm pretty sure there's not any mental health professionals out there that charge that. And sometimes what you're providing is an, is a stepping stone to moving to mental health, but people don't know where to start because they're so intimidated and the cost is so high. So this is a great, um, at least in my opinion, I think this is a great entryway or gateway to getting either the help they need on your platform or transitioning to additional care. No, that's exactly right. I think one of the biggest, if not the biggest barrier for anyone who is needing support or has come to that place where they recognize that they need to talk to someone is often just that. It's taking that first step to reach out and connect. And so being able to remove that barrier of taking that giant leap to connect to potentially with a, a licensed therapist or a licensed professional, potentially even somebody who is connected to your employer, presents a number of different barriers with regards to stigma that we hope to remove completely by allowing that individual to feel comfortable and connecting with somebody that they know is one, not a licensed professional, but two, having a, a really deep understanding that they've been through a very similar experience before. So it's seen as more of a, a peer to peer conversation. Okay. So um, just to expound on that, um, a lot of times you mentioned the access to mental health professionals on the college environment. It's pretty much true in my community as well. I know that you're, it's a good, two to three months out before you can get in to see a mental health professional. So this might also bridge a gap while you are waiting for your appointment to come up. Yeah, absolutely. And unfortunately, the the funnel is just too small today for the number of licensed professionals that are out there in regards to the demand, which is, is you know, increased tenfold over the last 12 months. Yeah. Okay. So now we're to the fun part. <laughs> My five burning questions. And you know, since I have a co-host, I have a couple extra. She she gave me two. <laughs> well, I only put two on there. You're well, you you can freestyle it, good on you. Okay. So what is your absolute favorite food in the world? And the secondary follow-up question is, can you cook it? So uh, that's actually a pretty easy one from me. So as a as a guy who grew up on a, a farm and ranch in West Texas, I, I would be shot if I didn't tell you that it was a steak. steak. I knew it was gonna be a steak. <laughs> A, a good a good steak over a, a mesquite fire is about as good as it gets. So I would take a, um, a ribeye or fillet, but uh, you know either one will work fine for me. And can you cook it? I I, I feel like I I don't I do it justice. I'll say that. So my my mm -hmm. father cooked an amazing steak, and I I'm not quite there yet, but I I've had many years of of practice. Um, so I'm I'm getting closer. And you're good with eating. You're good with eating the mistakes, right? I have no, I have no problem eating the steak. <laughs> okay, so um, how are you currently marketing your program, and have you found one method more successful than others? You know, today, uh, transparently, a lot of it is word of mouth. We've, we've been very fortunate. Um, again, I think it, it resonates with the time. I think it resonates with not only callers but also listeners who. Um, want to help and support others during this time of need. And as I mentioned earlier, we're, we're consistently, uh, we're constantly very, very humbled at the number of individuals applying to be listeners on our platform to help and support others. But today it's been mostly through, through word of mouth. That's amazing. So if you could magically get everyone to do one thing to help them become more empathetic in general, what, what would it be? Um, well, <laughs> I, I, I would say become a better listener. Um, you know, I, I think the reality is in the world that we live in today, we have, we've truthfully, we've replaced community with technology. Um, when you look at the way today that we interact and engage 
75, 80, sometimes 90% of our, our day is spent uh, through email, through text, uh, is through technology. And we've, we've, we've found ourselves not having those one-on-one -on -one conversations. I, I often say that we've replaced handshakes and hugs with likes and comments uh, across social media. And, you know, I, I think that um, we find ourselves in a, an epidemic of, of loneliness and, and isolation, even again, prior to what COVID uh, has done and now amplified that situation. And so I would say becoming a better listener, being there for others, asking the question, how are you doing? I think that's what I would focus on. I love it. Okay. So what is your favorite sport and why? Again, you're in Texas, so I'm pretty sure I know where this is going, but I'll give you the chance to surprise me. <laughs> well, yeah, sorry. I'm not going to surprise you probably. Uh, growing up in Texas, Friday night lights, uh, high school football. But for me, it's college football. I, I love college football. So I um, went to school down at A&M, so I, I'll always root on the Aggies. But, uh, you know, I could sit around all day and watch college football regardless of who's on TV. Okay, last question from me. So again, a year of technology, we haven't had a lot of face-to-face -face meetings. So if there's one person that you could meet in person, sit down, have a cup of coffee with, whatever, um, eat a steak, um, that, you, that you only know socially, so let's like say through LinkedIn or a podcast host as an alternative, who would it be? Oh, that's a tough question. Um, so may, maybe there's two, maybe I could get it in, sure. in, in the same meeting though. You know, yeah, there you go. So it would actually be Bill and Melinda Gates and the oh. foundation. So I, I follow the foundation and, you know, I, I really love obviously what they've done and, and the philanthropy work that they've done. Um, you know, I think their focus and mission within the foundation is to always ensure that um, that every person has the opportunity to live a healthy and productive life, regardless of their resources. And, you know, I think that really aligns with our mission with listeners on call and ensuring that everyone has the opportunity uh, to be heard and connect with somebody regardless of their resources and, and where they live geographically. And so, you know, I, I would love to tell you that um, I see a lot of synergies there and opportunities uh, I think that can be had with the, the, the foundation. So I would love to meet uh, Bill and Melinda Gates if that was ever an opportunity. That is a wonderful answer. Okay, Miss Tanya okay. Boyd, All it right, is well, your turn. Since we have this Texas theme going on, I'm going to ask you this question. If someone okay. that you knew came to visit Texas for the first time, where's the first place that you would take them? Uh, um, you know, li living in Dallas, I've raised in West Texas. Um, I've been most everywhere in, West, in, in Texas as a whole. Um, you know, I, I honestly think that the first place I would take them would be uh, back to the farm. I think I would go back to the country. I think, you know, everybody has this kind of image in their head of what Texas is supposed to be, whether that's uh, the cowboy boots or the cowboy hat, um, you know, Fort, Fort Worth stockyards. I think it maybe it's a great place to start. But, you know, I think to really, truly kind of immerse yourself in what I believe and what I grew up thinking Texas was is to just go back to the farm and, and, and work the cows for a day and, and spend time out on the ranch. Um, you know, if it's the middle of summer, see if they wouldn't want to haul hay in a hundred degree, you know, really get that experience. Uh, so I've, I've done that as well. And so, um, but to me, that's what I would say uh, the Texas experience would be. I tend to agree with that. Okay. Well, one last question. So let's talk bucket lists. If you had, if you wanted to do one thing and, and mark it off your list in the next five or 10 years, what would that be? Oh, that's a good one too. Um, you know, I'll say it's fitting because it's coming up this weekend and, and that's actually the masters. So, um, you know, my, my father who passed away this last fall, uh, that was always something that he and I talked about getting to do together and we didn't. Uh, so that would be, that would be on my bucket list to do. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Well, th thank you both for joining us. Um, before we leave, Cole, do you have any parting thoughts or wisdom that you want to share with our audience? No, other than I, I really appreciate the opportunity to, to be here today and share a little bit about our story and not only our vision, but our, our mission with listeners on call and, and ensuring that everyone has the opportunity to connect and be heard when they need. 
Awesome. Okay, so um, I will. I am going to leave the link to listeners on call in the comments when this um, it, when this live session is over. Um, you can connect with Cole there. I will also link his um, LinkedIn profile. So please feel free to reach out to him. Alternatively, you're welcome to reach out to either Tanya or I as well, and we would be happy to connect you with Cole. So thank both. Thank you both for joining us today. And until next week, have a great day. Appreciate it. Thank you, Nancy. Bye.